So tell me, what's the best part of being a commissioner? Just the, the people. It's the people. It's, it's their gratitude when you can solve their problems. And they, they appreciate it so much. Jeannie, welcome to Timelines, Meet the Voter. Thank you so much for inviting me. Well, I appreciate you to be here. So today's episode is being sponsored by the RMC. And the RMC is also, you're, you're active, you go from time to time to the meetings, and we appreciate your silver sponsorship. The first thing I've got to ask you is, what is cowgirl logic? Well, that's what I call common sense and doing the right thing. Well, where do you learn common sense? I think it was the way I was brought up and just the everyday encouragement to do the right thing by my grandfather who raised me. Very good. Now, interesting story. You started in Alaska and you ended up here in the northern Nevada. Yes. So what's your background in Alaska? Um, it, I was born there. Uh, my grandfather came up during the gold rush at the turn of the century, and he stowed away on a ship, a sailing ship, all the way to Nome, and he, all he had with him was a shoe shine kit. So your grandfather, so he, he came from, where did he come from, Europe somewhere? Italy. Italy? Mm -hmm. And he stowed away in Italy? No, no, this was from Seattle. Oh, so, okay, so mm -hmm. he went into probably New York. In Ellis in, Island, in Ellis Island, spent six months. And he was young, he was 12 years old. Did he have family with him? Um, his family was with him. Mm -hmm. And he got to Washington State, which is smart, go well, west. The fa uh, some of the other family was in the uh, Seattle area. And so that's where he got on the ship. At 12 and, years old? At 12 years old. Did anyone go with him? Nobody knew he was going. Wow. He just had an idea he was going to go make it big at the, in the gold rush. So how did he survive in Alaska and where did he, um, he end up? He shined shoes. Um, and I guess they partied up there so they had to look good. And uh, so he shined shoes enough to make enough money to head back down the next spring after the ice went out and um, gathered up enough groceries and whatever he could afford to buy and he started the Snake River Grocery. In Nome, Alaska? In Nome, Alaska. Wow, okay. I didn't know that. So he actually started a grocery store up there. Smart. Mm -hmm. A young age. Very young. Very young. Wow. That's pretty amazing roots. So your grandfather, mm -hmm. that was your grandfather, mm -hmm. and he raised you? Or, pretty much. Yeah, mm -hmm. good close family? Very close. So your mom and dad is that, was your mom from, or your dad? My mom was from Nome. So yeah. how, how did your dad, where's your dad from? He was from Idaho, and uh, he was in the Coast Guard on a cutter, and came to Nome, and fell in love with my mother. And uh, as soon as he was out of the guard, uh, Coast Guard, he uh, came back and they got married. That's a good story. So mm -hmm. love at first sight, it sounds like almost. It was, yeah. And then, so you were born in Alaska, and you went to school there in Nome. Mm -hmm. And what were your early years like after you, in, in Alaska and Nome, when you were an adult? Oh, once I graduated, I, um, I had some scholarships and I was going to go to college, but my grandfather came, became ill, and my mom needed help, and so I stayed, stayed on, and then I got married. And had four girls, so. Oh, very good. Up in Alaska, mm -hmm. all the kids born in Nome. Mm -hmm. And now, you did you still have family in Washington State? Um, yeah, the, the my grandfather's uh, family, his you know his brothers and sisters, and who had businesses there. Mm -hmm. So he came by that kind of naturally, and he started his businesses up there. So I know you um, came from Alaska when you're older mm -hmm. into uh, Washington. What brought you down into, back to Washington? Um, you know, um, it's a long, long story. Um, we just it somehow ended up on the Elkan Highway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, back when it wasn't paved. Yes, that's true. Just a little bit of it was paved then. 
and it was a it was a long trip. We had a load of horses and you brought and horses kids. down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had horses in Alaska. Always. Wow. So uh, we came came down to Washington to swim, Washington, and uh, and that's where I got into the real estate business. So in 1971. I got to go back. Horses in Alaska. Mm -hmm. I've been to Alaska quite a few times. I just think of the severe winters, especially up in Nome. Mm -hmm. What do you do with the horses in the wintertime? Well, they seem to grow a lot of wool. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. Long hair. They're special horses. And, and you know, the, they did quite well. Because if you think about it, you know, the moose and, and all the other animals get by just fine, even if it's 80 below. They oh, I know. I've been it's, that. It's I, incredible. I've been at Delta Junction um, more than two hours outside at 50 below mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. military where we did outside manures and 50 mm -hmm. below it's pretty pretty mm -hmm. amazing i bet yeah. the northern lights are gorgeous up there they truly are they're, they're it's beautiful you remind me of the northern lights i remember the first time i saw them they're yeah they just spectacular dance. the colder it is the, the more they dance <laughs> now you lived in fairbanks also for a while didn't mm -hmm. you is, yep. are, do you see the northern lights there too more often though in Nome than fairbanks actually more so in fairbanks because okay. it was a colder more I've been in Fairbanks and where I've seen them, and then Delta Junction. Uh, mm -hmm. Delta's uh, real, real bright there. Yeah, I've only seen them once, and I saw them, saw them from the St. Lawrence River once when I was flying. It's the only mm -hmm. other time I've seen them this low. Mm -hmm. um, they're beautiful, though. They're they just, are. They dance. Exceptionally and, beautiful. And they come out of nowhere, it seems. Yeah. Every color of the rainbow. There yeah. are rainbows. <laughs> it is beautiful. So, then, so you came into Washington State, mm -hmm. and then how did you get to Nevada? Well, just kind of roundabout for a short stay in California. Uh -huh. My daughters and I were, were raising quarter horses at the time, and we still are. Um, and we were training and showing horses for people. And so the, the big shows were mostly in California. What type of horses did you work with? Quarter uh, horses. Quarter horses? Yeah. Okay. Just about every event. <laughs> that's fun. That's Between I, the four of us, uh, six of us, five of us, whatever the now number horses was. horses can be expensive, especially in California. They are, but that, the way you afford them is to have make it a business mm -hmm. and do a good job at it, and uh, you do pretty well. That's good. I, so you were actually learn, teaching, you were the mm -hmm. trainer, mm -hmm. training, training other people's horses. Right, absolutely. And... Uh, so that that kept us pretty busy besides my real estate which is how mm, I so you, you did real estate in, in washington, washington california starting in 1970 71 california and now nevada and now nevada that's mm -hmm. in three states i still have a california license california too. and nevada mm -hmm. yeah it's uh california is actually easier to hold maintain it's every four years you're continuing I know, education you can do it all with uh, online courses it's great you think california would be more difficult than nevada but nevada is yeah. actually pretty difficult isn't it, it it's kind of uh, irritating in a lot of ways you know the way they make the laws to do your, for your continuing education and all that sort of thing but, why do you think uh, that is in, in nevada that it's more complex than california maybe they're trying to weed out the realtors uh, Maybe, <laughs> uh, but they have to do it too. <laughs> you have to do the same work. I know. It's, it's, it is. We noticed that um, my family has been in real estate a long time in California, mm -hmm. and we have we still have a family business over there. And my wife and I are both licensed. I just became licensed here, but I noticed mm -hmm. it was a lot more work mm -hmm. getting my licenses here than it was California. Right. And then yeah. maintaining them. And right, right. The rules are about the same, though. Property. They are property. very similar. But the uh, same principles. But the licensing themselves. That four, I do like that four-year renewal. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's a lot easier. <laughs> so, and the, the other thing too is you can have your broker's license in more places there. Right. Easier. Mm -hmm. Just it's easier to file for, right. for brokers. Right. But I guess they're trying to protect people here. And, mm -hmm. they, and you know, another thing I think about too is we came from the gambling industry early on in the 30s, mm -hmm. and there was some corruption, and they had to clean it up. Sure. So they decided they keep everything clean. So the NRDSs sort of took that model, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the NRDS or our code, I guess. Yeah. I, I'm getting confused now. When I go back and yeah. from California, NRS. Nevada. NRS. 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 Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. NRS. Mm -hmm. NRS. But um, they, I think they took some of that modeling mm -hmm. off the regulation of the casinos, which they had to do. Sure. In the old days, so very good. Mm -hmm. And now, how do you like Northern Nevada? 
I love Nevada. It's just like home. It is. It, it's similar to Nome in a lot of ways because where I live, there's not very many trees other than the ones you plant. And where we had what they called, I can't call them that, can I? That would be PC. What's that? Anyhow, they're, 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 they're like bumps in the ground, you know, and they're what we called them, I can't say. Oh, but, yeah. <laughs> but uh, you, <laughs> it compares with uh, the sagebrush, mm -hmm. only it's a lot easier to maneuver in yeah. sagebrush. Yeah. I can imagine. Horses like it better, too. Yeah, the sagebrush. Yeah. Yeah, they can eat the sage. Yeah, they just instead of falling in holes between the things I can't ta tell you what they are. Yeah. So... Interesting. So, you know, Northern Nevada is very nice. You know, one thing that I've noticed, I've been here five years, that mm -hmm. there's certain migration areas. A lot of people from Idaho uh, come here, U mm -hmm. Utah, of course. But Idaho, there's a lot of people back and forth. Idaho, there's a lot of commonalities. Mm -hmm. But there's actually quite a few people here who've come from Alaska and go back mm -hmm. and forth. Quite a they few. Do. Amazing number. Mm -hmm. Many yes. more than ever. In California, I never met anybody mm -hmm. from Alaska, hardly. But we also have a lot of Californians. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we do. So those are the states that um, mm -hmm. we get a lot of influence. But the, for why do you think that Alaska relationship is here? Right? Well, it's it's like a in between place because a lot of people do the snowbird thing and go all the way to Mexico mm -hmm. or and Arizona. stay there, or Arizona, or somewhere really warm. But I think the ones that are thinking about ultimately living here permanently are the ones that we get here yeah. because it's kind of in between. Yeah. What's nice about the weather that I like in the wintertime, I ski, I love to ski in the mountains. Mm -hmm. We live about 5,000 feet and we can go up to mountains and ski in 20 mm -hmm. minutes, 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. But we have, it may snow, mm -hmm. but it can be very warm and pleasant and sunny mm -hmm. in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. And it's right. a warmth too you get. Very true. And, and it melts off pretty fast. Mm -hmm. I don't know, up north, do you get more snow than we do here? You're how many um, miles Some north? years. 20 miles north of us, 15 miles. Uh, We're down in Reno oh, right now. Okay, yeah. So up in Palomino Valley where I live, it's it's not much different than here. Okay. Very good. So we're going to take a break and come back with your um, life and success principles and talk a little bit about your politics. We didn't really talk how you got into politics here. That's an interesting thing to do. <laughs> After having a happy life. <laughs> <laughs> and so we'll come right back. This episode is being made possible by members of the RMC especially the life members and the silver sponsors to help us produce Timelines Meet the Voter. It's been a heck of a campaign season. We've done a lot of interviews. And again, just want to thank the silver sponsors specifically and the life members. Also, uh, just a reminder, on October the 17th, Sam Chad and Ray Hager are going to be at the RMC for lunch at the Atlantis for an after actions on the election. So we'll see what happens. Welcome back from Timelines Meet the Voter. Janine, we're going to go into your life and success principles now. You gave me three principles that you wanted to talk about. I'm going to read them. God and country, constitution, and education. I'll ask you one at a time, what does God and country mean to you? It means everything. It, it is um, it's just the greatest country in the world, and God was behind the formation of America and and so that just kind of goes together and and I believe in in everything that's in the Constitution um, our forefathers who were also inspired by God um, formed these important documents like the Constitution so every every bit of this is so important so ingrained in me from my grandfather because when he came to Ellis Island from Italy, he memorized all the important documents. And when we were growing up, he would instill the knowledge from, that he had about America. And he always told us that America was the most wonderful, the greatest place in the whole world to live. Oh, and he was very successful. And, very successful. But he lived in a tough place, too. <laughs> no. It was not, uh, it was very tough, yeah. It's a tough, not uh, easy. on the environment, yeah, yeah. And very tough. tough on the body. Must have been a tough guy. Yeah, you know. Very good, and that leads you into the Constitution. Mm -hmm. 
your, your grandfather memorized it, so I guess he probably influenced you a little bit. Oh, yeah, he knew every word to Declaration and that, everything. Oh, he was like a book. So what does the Constitution of the United States mean to you? It's um, our, just the way that our government was put together and, and, um, and designed a plan that if we don't we don't really work hard, we're going to lose it. It's, it's, uh, it's so important to our country and to the people of the country. That's, and people don't realize how important it is. Very good. And then finally, that lives into education and uh, continuous learning mm -hmm. is important to you. Right. So what are the, what's education? What do you mean by education? Are you talking about I mean, kids? or I, Kids. The history is being left out of education so much nowadays. I mean, it, it is just almost a, a scary thing. I ask my grandkids, have you learned, have you had American history yet? And when they, they say, no, no, we don't have history at all. And, and it just, it's frightful. It, it really is that they don't know the history of our country. So that's one part of education. The other part is I think education should be balanced and it should fit the person and the person's needs. Like for instance, when kids get to a certain age, they'll have an aptitude for some vocation even, or they know they're going to be a doctor. And then you can kind of pattern their education after that. And that's kind of been left out here locally. We, we think that the money that comes from the feds to pay for education um, dictates that we just put them through from kindergarten to college with all the same little little curriculums instead of matching them to your child. Right. I, I mean, a lot of people are opposed to um, our tax dollars going to Washington and forced back on mm -hmm. us. I assume that it's the a Tenth Amendment. The issue. Department of Education could go away along with Agenda 21. Well, that, that's so. Local control. I'm sure you support mm -hmm. the idea of local control, Absolute keeping the dollars here. Government at the, the closest level to the people. That sort of leads into good issue. You got into politics a little late in life. Not well. Not, not late, I guess, but you look great. Not really. But you, you won your first time. Yeah. <laughs> not really. <laughs> I started when I was 39 initially, 38, and I thought that was old. I started in politics when I was just a kid. Okay. So... You have a really unique background in politics. You, you were elected later on in life and got real active, but when you were young, you were also active. Right. And that's because your, your grandfather actually knew one of the presidents of the United States? Yes. He was General Eisenhower, and he was running for president. Wow, General Eisenhower. So you've met Eisenhower? He spent many, many hours at our home. Very good. Eisenhower. So he's a West Point grad. I can relate to that. Mm -hmm. So what did you think of him? Was, he, was this after World War II then? It was during the war. Oh, during World War II. Mm -hmm. I was pretty little. So Not what was, what, he, what was he, he doing up in Nome, Alaska? Well, it was, that's, they came over the North Pole to come into Nome, which was the break for the airplane, uh -huh. and then, then went on to Washington, D.C. Now, was your grandfather mayor then? He was. And he reached out and... Well, they were just very good friends. So after he got out of, after World War II, did your grandfather stay in contact with him? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. And that's how we, why we worked on his campaign. Eisenhower, I think, was one of our greatest presidents. I believe that, too. Abilene. I'm a little bit prejudiced, yeah. but I believe so. Yeah. Kansas is, um, I've been to his, uh, the president's library. That's very cool. In Kansas. I'd like to see that someday. It's out in the middle of nowhere. Mm, yeah. <laughs> you gotta drive for a while yeah. where we grew up. It's very remote. Uh, was it, uh, he was like the perfect president. I mean, he, he never expected to do anything but give. He never really took 
Yep. Do you think? No, he was. He was. Uh, he was a, a great commander too. Barry. Yeah, there's a Very statue good. at West Point of him you know, looking up at Eisenhower, and Barrick's named after him. And no, Eisenhower's a good man. So that's that's how you got influenced in politics. I like Ike. I like Ike. Yeah, I've got an <laughs> Ike mug. We'll have to put that up over here. Um, so now, you, how did you get into politics here locally? You're a commissioner. Yes. Um, I was very involved with uh, county business because of the different things that happened to people, my neighbors, um, people being mistreated by overzealous county officials and this sort of thing, and I got into the habit of defending them. So I spent a lot of time at the podium. Do you think you're a real estate broker up in the north, doing mostly mm -hmm. land, bigger parcels, right. so you got to know people Ranches too. Ranches and... Yeah. One thing about a career in real estate, we didn't really get to talk about a career in real estate, why so many want to go in. Mm -hmm. But one of the unique areas is you really get to know people mm -hmm. and the issues mm -hmm. uh, that the people have to deal with. Yeah, well I got involved quite a bit with uh, public lands issues because dealing with ranches, you have allotments and that sort of thing to deal with. and. And uh, a lot of ranchers were having a lot of problems, and I got very involved with, uh, you know, the government at that level. Interesting. So. And that's that's a whole field in itself. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's so different. You, you do have that issue here, and mm -hmm. they have uh, the BLM is a unique area too. It intertwines in and out. And well, we had federal government issues in Alaska, so that was before that. So, so I I knew that that uh, sometimes you just had to fight for your rights. Uh, we, my brother and I had a mine that was left to us, and uh, the government ultimately took the mine away. So I always wanted to learn as much as I could about how to, how to protect people. That's, a, that's a interesting. That could be a story in itself. So going forward, um, See, about, about four years ago, you ran for commissioner, which mm -hmm. is five commissioners here. It's like supervisor. Some areas call it supervisor. Some mm -hmm. states, it's commissioner here. Five mm -hmm. commissioners in the county. You have, is it the fifth up north? Yeah, District 5, which is 89% of the county. A large mass. It goes all the way driving. to the Oregon border. And you have a big truck, too, don't you? I do. I burned <laughs> a lot of diesel. <laughs> <laughs> she drives a nice truck. Mm -hmm. That's a big area. So you have to travel a lot. It is, yeah. A lot. And see folks, that's good. Yeah. So what are the big issues that are facing the people in your district? Well, one of the kind of over, overbearing type of things that's gone on is uh, the flooding in Lemon Valley. And uh, it's just heartbreaking to see what the people are going through and that they're just not getting the relief that I feel that they, sh they deserve. Um, I have Washington, D.C. people working on um, maybe some remedies, um, but I can't seem to get a lot of support here because we have a lot of, a lot of people that are more interested in making a, making a lot of money than, than to, for them to think about what these people are suffering. Yeah, people are trying to develop around it, mm -hmm. buy it. It was really not mm -hmm. a good area. There's so many great places mm -hmm. to build. Yeah, there's been it's, warnings in past yeah. uh, writings that no building should take place near one of these dry lake beds, you know, dry, in the yeah. playa. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. No, I, that's that's why I'm not in politics anymore. But those <laughs> hard, doesn't, you know, you mentioned one thing that you didn't like about politics when we were talking mm -hmm. before the show, and you mentioned decisions that are not good. I and there truly are some crazy decisions that don't make sense. They're it's based true. off a small special interest instead of the people. True. And it, it's very sad. And it hurts people in many, many ways. So in this last four years, Lemon Valley has been one of the big issues. That's one of the most disastrous issues. Yeah. And folks, when you go out to Lemon Valley, those are real Nevada people out there. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have been there for a long time. They almost all. I mean, if you, if you go through the neighborhoods, I, I listen to their stories. And, and I mean, the, the one gentleman, he's, he's lived in, he was born in that, raised in that house, you know, and his parents had it. And he got flooded really badly. 
um, and other people that, that have retired here. There's retired policemen, um, retired everything, that have worked their whole lives in Nevada, and that's where they chose to live. Because it was... And the parcel's a little bit bigger, mm -hmm. and it's affordable. They mostly were one acre, and now they're trying to cram in six to eight, lot, eight houses on really? a lot. I haven't seen that. Right next door to that. I mean, can you imagine the people... I've seen it because I've been in real estate so many years that you put those kind of situations close to each other, and you're always going to have... Mrs. O'Malley's rooster is waking me up. She has to get rid, they have to get rid of their rooster. Or um, so-and-so's kid rode through our property and the horse left some fertilizer. And, and all these little problems wouldn't happen if we did proper planning. Proper planning, yeah. Planning and so, but that's one of the jobs of local government and community. Mm -hmm. That's why you have government closest to the people works best. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank goodness we finally are working on a regional plan. Yeah. So, planning, is that, that's one of the main we, we could go on and on, but, you know, mm -hmm. planning and good planning and common sense. Responsible government. Yeah. I wrote an op-ed just recently about that. So tell me what's the best part of being a commissioner? Just the, the people. It's the people. It's, it's their gratitude when you can solve their problems. And they, they appreciate it so much. Right. I, I can understand. And that's yeah. that's the individual. That's it. That's not the mm -hmm. special interest. That's just the individual people mm -hmm. who live and in the community. And that's who I I ran for, was the people, and I believe that I I am their representative, and it's what I do that makes a difference in their life. And to me, that is really really important in a. a res I feel very responsible about very that. Good. Now I want to go back as we finish up um, in your in your district, just to clarify, what are the bigger areas? You have Lemon Valley, I know, mm -hmm. got all the way to the north. What are the other cities or communities? Well, we have Verdi. Verdi, yeah, Verdi to the west. Yeah, Verdi. That's one uh -huh. of my favorite little towns, including Bell Eye Ranch. You got the best places. And, I like Verdi. And then uh, I like half Verdi. of Sun Valley. Yeah, Sun Valley. And all of Lemon Valley and a lot of the Stead area. And Stead. And Coal yep. Springs and and Gerlach. Oh, Gerlach's way up there. Uh -huh. How many people in Gerlach? A hundred? <laughs> Maybe? <laughs> yeah, no. So, well, they finally got the schools up to 25 kids now. Oh, really? So, yeah, I know. it's growing again. It's a long way up there. It's on the border here to our north. Well, it's Almost. just a short distance up, really. Because the border is a long well, ways Well, yeah, you keep on. It's the, last, it's the last community before the border, isn't it? Yeah, pretty I've much. Never, I haven't, it's terrible. I haven't been up there. I cut off and go into yeah. the... Yeah. Well, some of those roads are kind of rugged, so it's probably best I know best, it's a long way to the sign, yeah. <laughs> Very good. That's good. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's amazing how you twist over to Verdi, because Verdi is like, I'm here, mm -hmm. and Verdi is down the river, and that sort of mm -hmm. meanders. When I, right. I it lines. just kind of wraps around. I, I also have Pebble Creek. So all of that, mm -hmm. and then you get up to where the city starts, and and it ends, and then it takes in part of Sun Valley, and then District Three is kind of sitting in the middle of all that. And do you have any Reno then? In any of the Reno prop, um, well, prop a little bit. Now we do because there's so much annexation, but it's all within the yeah. rural area. Reno is really a strange shape. It goes long and wide. And Talk about poor planning. <laughs> it's a. It could have been different communities, actually, mm -hmm. up north. It probably mm -hmm. would have been better in the long run to create. Yeah, and in fact, people are threatening to even do something called the uh, un unincorporated, unincorporated towns. Yeah, because it's uh, even the the strip in Las Vegas. Did you know was an unincorporated town? The outer part is. Mm -hmm. Is it still unincorporated? Mm -hmm. That's pretty. It saves them on taxes. <laughs> I always want my, I don't want to talk, <laughs> but I'd rather have my business in the county. I shouldn't say too much. <laughs> very good. Very good. Well, Janine, thank you. We have one last question. It's really important. So we're okay. up in up the North North Valleys. Where's the best place to eat? Oh, Hometown Cafe in Lemon Valley. So those are the, any, any other place up there? Hometown? And Bordertown. And Bordertown, awesome. yep. Mm -hmm. Hometown, we should have done the interview there. They're so nice well, in, in Hometown. I call Hometown Cafe my second office. Very good. Well, I want to thank you, and I thanks for coming over to my house today and venturing down in the Reno. Be careful. <laughs> By the river. You get lost down here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I like it. You know, um, 
we like Reno High School a lot, and mm -hmm. that's one of the reasons, and it's really close. I can get up to the ski slopes fast. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So, thank you, Jeannie. Hi, this is Bill, and thank you for listening to this episode of Timelines. If you could go right here and subscribe on YouTube, if you're watching on YouTube, of course, and watch a few more movies over here. And if you're listening to on iTunes, go ahead and subscribe. Appreciate it very much, rating and review. Till next time, take care and always make it a great day.